Hi everyone. Soleil Royal, Royal Sun, was a French 104 gun ship of the line, flagship of Admiral Tourville. She was built in Brest between 1668 and 1670 by engineer Laurent Hubac, was launched in 1669, and stayed unused in Brest Harbour for years. She was recommissioned with 112 guns and 1,200 men when the Nine Years' War broke out in 1688 as the flagship of the Escada du Ponent, Squadron of the West. Battle of Beachy Head She departed Brest on the 22nd of June 1690 as flagship of Anne Hilarion de Torville. She spent three days in Camaret Zorma waiting for favourable wind before sailing to Isle of Wight where the English fleet was thought to be anchored. The Isle of Wight is a county and the largest and second most populous island of England. It is located in the English Channel, two to five miles off the coast of Hampshire, from which it is separated by the Solent. Two ships sent in reconnaissance located the English anchored at Beachy Head. Beachy Head is a chalk headland in East Sussex, England. The cliff is the highest chalk sea cliff in Britain, rising to 531 feet above sea level. The Battle of Beachy Head began in the morning of 10 July 1690. Soleil Royal led the centre of the French formation. Torrington advanced towards the French in line of battle. He placed the Dutch White Squadron with 21 ships, commanded by Cornelis Evertsen, in the van. Torrington was in the centre red squadron, the rear blue squadron, commanded by Vice Admiral Ralph Delaville, comprised English and Dutch ships. The French Admiral divided his force of 70 ships of the line into the customary three squadrons, with white, blue, and white and blue pennants respectively. Torville, aboard the Soleil Royal, commanded the centre, white squadron. The Blue Squadron in the French van was commanded by Chateau and Alt, Victor Marie de Stray commanded the rear white and blue squadron. In each fleet the squadron commanders were in the centre of their respective squadrons and the division flag officers in the centre of their divisions. At about eight o'clock the Allies, being to windward, ran down together in line abreast, elongated in order to cover the whole French fleet and prevent doubling at either end. The Dutch squadron bore down on the leading French squadron to engage on a parallel course but left the leading division of Chateau Renault's squadron unmarked. This division cut across Evertsen's path and doubling on the Dutch squadron, was able to inflict much loss. Vice Admiral Ashby of the Red Squadron failed to help the Dutch, as the Marquis de Villette succeeded in tacking ahead, placing Ashby between two fires. When Dorrington brought the remainder of the Red Squadron into action, he found difficulty in getting close enough because of the sag in the French line and came no closer than twice gunshot range. Admiral Torville, finding himself with few adversaries in the centre, pushed forward his own leading ships, which Torrington's dispositions had left without opponents, further strengthening the French attack in the van. The Dutch were now opposed by the whole of Chateau Renault's squadron and the van and centre divisions of Torville's squadron. Delaville's greatly outnumbered Blue Squadron fought a desperate battle with Destray in the rear. Evertsen in the van, having lost his second in command and many other officers, was forced to withdraw. The Dutch had maintained the unequal contest with very little assistance from the rest of the Allied fleet, he left two Dutch fireships sunk, Suikamolen and Kroonvogel, one shattered and dismasted vessel captured, Frisch Lunder 68 cannon which was later burnt by the French, and many badly damaged. Outmatched, Torrington ended the battle late in the afternoon. Evertsen prevented further Dutch losses by taking advantage of the tide and the drop in wind. He ordered his ships to drop their anchors while in full sail, the French, who were not sufficiently alert, were carried off by the current and out of cannon range. The eight-hour battle was a victory for the French but far from decisive. When the tide changed at 2100 hours, the Allies weighed anchor. Torville pursued, but instead of ordering a general chase, he maintained the strict line of battle, reducing the speed of the fleet to that of the slower ships. Torrington burned six more badly damaged Dutch ships, Nordequartier, Gekrundberg, 
Marged Van Enkhuizen, El Swart, Tholen and the five ship Marged Van Enkhuizen, and one English ship, the third rate 70 gun Anne, to avoid their capture before gaining the refuge of the Thames. The Wappen Van Utrecht sank by herself. As soon as Torrington was in the safety of the river, he ordered all the navigation boys removed, making any attempt to follow him too dangerous. The battle was the greatest French tactical naval victory over their English and Dutch opponents during the war. The Dutch lost six ships of the line and three fire ships, their English allies also lost one ship of the line, whereas the French did not lose a vessel. Control of the English Channel temporarily fell into French hands but Vice Admiral Torville failed to pursue the Allied fleet with sufficient vigour, allowing it to escape to the River Thames. Torville was criticised for not following up his victory and was relieved of his command. The English Admiral Arthur Herbert, 1st Earl of Torrington, who had advised against engaging the superior French fleet but had been overruled by Queen Mary and her ministers, was court-martialed for his performance during the battle. Although he was acquitted, King William dismissed him from the service. Battle of Barfleur In 1692, on the 12th of May, now carrying 104 guns, she left Brest, leading a 45-vessel fleet, on the 29th. The squadron met a 97-ship strong English and Dutch fleet in the Battle of Barfleur. In spite of their numerical inferiority, the French attacked but were forced to flee after a large-scale battle resulting in heavy damage to both sides. The Soleil Royal was too severely damaged to return to Brest, and was beached in Cherbourg for repairs, along with the admirable and triumphant. Cherbourg is located at the northern tip of the Cotentin Peninsula. Cherbourg is situated at the mouth of the Divet and at the south of the bay between Cap Levy to the east and Cap de la Hague to the west. Cherbourg Octeville is 75 miles from the English coast. Battle at Cherbourg and the end of the Soleil Royal. During the night of 2 and the 3rd of June, beached at the Point du Homet, she was attacked by 17 ships which she managed to repel with artillery fire. However, a fire ship set her stern on fire and the fire soon reached the powder rooms. Although the population of Cherbourg came to rescue, there was only one survivor among the 883, strong crew. The remains of the Soleil Royal now lie buried beneath the parking space next to the arsenal. Soleil Royal became a traditional name for capital ships of the Ancien Regime, and several ships bore it afterwards. She was said to be a good sailing ship and her decorations were amongst the most beautiful and elaborate of all Baroque flagships. The emblem of the sun had been chosen by Louis XIV as his personal symbol. A detailed 1st to 40th scale model of the hull and sculptures was built in 1839 by sculptor and modelist Jean-Baptiste Danneron. This model is now on display at the Musée National de la Marine in Paris.
Thanks for watching.